Hi class, today we're taking a look at plate boundaries and before we talk about plate boundaries, I just want to sort of review again what is a plate. So a plate is a large section of the Earth's crust uh, in the upper part of the mantle, so it's called the lithosphere and then right below that is called the asthenosphere, but it, that is broken up into these really gigantic plates and you can see they're named based on where they're located, so you've got the Pacific plate here, You've got the North American plate. Uh, you've got some smaller plates here called the Nazca plate. So the Earth's crust is broken up into these plates. And then along these boundaries, and that's our goal for today, is to understand what is a plate boundary. Um, there's different movements that take place. So if you look on the bottom, you can see convergent plates uh, are black and they've got triangles. You can see all along here in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, you've got divergent plates. They're somewhat blue, intermixed with red, right in here, as an example. Uh, and then you've got transform plate boundaries, which are red. And the red typically are in between the blue. So in other words, transform plate boundaries are found in between divergent plate boundaries. So today we're taking a look at each of those uh, individually, and let's start. So here's a cross-sectional picture, and in a cross-sectional picture, we can see sort of what's happening on the inside of our planet. We look down below, again, we've got the lithosphere, uh, and again, the crust is called the lithosphere, and now if that, um, that lithosphere is in the ocean, it's typically made out of a, a magma that turns into a black rock called basalt. And then over here, we've got continental crust, and typically the continent uh, is made out of a rock uh, that is called granite. Now again, here in the middle, we've got a uh, mid-ocean ridge, and that's where the spreading takes place. It's really the powerhouse of um, the movement that takes place on the surface of our planet. And then where it's separating one location, it's got to be colliding somewhere else. So you can see here, there's a collision, uh, and that plate is getting jammed back down. And then over here, Again, that plate is getting jammed back down. Uh, again, it will remelt, and then that remelted material is going to come up and form new volcanoes. And again, here, that remelted material is going to come up and create uh, volcanoes on the coastline. So again, to briefly review, we've got the mid-ocean ridge, which is a divergent plate boundary. We've got sort of a collision here, uh, and we've got a collision over here. And then that represents uh, the convergent type of plate boundary. And then you take a look over here. Um, we've got the starting of, uh, say, a transform boundary. And then a small little transform boundary over in here. And again, that transform boundary is in between this part of the Mid-Ocean Ridge and then this larger section of the Mid-Ocean Ridge. So divergent plate boundaries are found in the center of each of our major ocean basins. And let's take a look at Atlantic Ocean first. So right down the center of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, again, would be called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And then if we follow it across, we over here, we've got it sort of in the Indian Ocean. And again, <laughs> really common name, uh, Mid-Indian Ridge. You follow that across over to this side, and then now you are entering into the east side of the Pacific. So it is called the East Pacific Rise. So when you're reading the textbook and you see words like ridge and rise and spreading center, um, all of those are really dealing with this feature of the Mid-Ocean Ridge. Now, as you work your way across, say, the ages of the ocean floor, right on the ridge, is the youngest, you take a look here in the age, uh, the youngest part of the ocean. And so again, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you have your youngest rock. And as you work your way out, you can see that some of the oldest rocks found in the ocean are near 200 million years old. Outside of that, it, it tends to get recycled because again, when it goes down, uh, it remelts and then it'll get recycled. So those are considered divergent plate boundaries. And again, the magma that's coming to the surface uh, typically is basaltic. And so then a lot of those rocks uh, have the color uh, that is black. One specific example, and an example I'm hopeful uh, to visit uh, in the next couple of years, uh, is that of Iceland. So Iceland, you can see here, uh, part of it is on the North American plate, and the other half is on the Eurasian plate. 
And so Iceland actually is getting larger and larger uh, as time goes by. Now again, only a couple centimeters uh, per year. Uh, you take a look here, uh, two other examples. Now we're looking at divergent zones uh, that are very much on the continent. So underneath, again, you have this hot magma. Here is part of the uh, West African Rift, and here, and then here. And then you also can take a look at the Red Sea uh, and the Gulf of Aden. Now, the one pretty basic feature is that it's very linear. So another forms a line. So here's the Red Sea up and down. Um, again, here are the rift zones. Uh, and basically they're going up and down and up and down. You can see these large linear lakes. Whenever you see really large linear features, um, that's telling you that there's a very, very large ridge system uh, right underneath those locations. Okay, so let's start talking about transform plate boundaries. Uh, here in Southern California, we have the largest um, transform plate boundary found on the planet. And the fault is called the San Andreas Fault. You can see here uh, is a zoomed in version. And you can see in here how actually large the San Andreas Fault system is. And again, we mentioned earlier that they're found in between divergent centers. Well, here you've got the Gorda Ridge, uh, and then down in here you have the start of the East Pacific Rise uh, in the Gulf of California. And so you can notice that um, the North American plate uh, is sort of moving to the uh, south, and the Pacific plate is somewhat moving to the north. Now, in 75 million years, uh, Los Angeles, which is down here, uh, will be somewhat near San Francisco, which is right here. But again, that is 75 million years from today. So that is called a transform plate boundary. Now let's take a look at convergent plate boundaries. So a convergent plate boundary ultimately is gonna behave differently based on what it's made out of. So again, when we go back to, well, what is the ocean floor made out of and what is the continent made out of? Ocean floor made out of basalt, continents made out of granite. Now, we briefly have talked about density, but oceanic basaltic rock is more dense and that's why it sort of sinks down into um, that mantle material. And the continental crust, uh, granite is a little less dense and so it is a little bit more buoyant. Uh, on top of uh, that act, um, upper part of the mantle as well. And so then we'll look through each of these different situations where the ocean runs into the continent, where an ocean runs into another ocean, and when the continent runs into the continent. Those are really our three examples. A key term before we look at those three examples is the idea of subduction. So subducting means to go down underneath and whenever there is subduction, so you see here, subducting plate, portion of that plate is going to remelt. Whenever there's remelting, uh, that density is different between the melted material and then the surrounding material. And so that magma is gonna come to the surface and that will be evident with uh, a local topography having volcanoes. So the term subduction uh, means for that plate to go down underneath. Now, scientists are really looking at sort of, you know, the angle in which it subducts, uh, the type of rock that the plate is itself, and uh, what it's remelting into. Um, but I just wanted to go over that term before we take a look at our examples. One added uh, feature, um, because when you have subduction, there's going to be a pulling down. Let me actually go back there's gonna be a pulling down of this part of the continent. And so you're gonna have this deep part of the ocean because of the pulling and the sinking of that section of both crusts. And that ter term uh, is called a trench. So a trench always indicates that there is subduction. So we take a look over here, this is the, area of Sumatra, um, and so it's called the Java Trench. Um, we've got right here, uh, right along uh, Peru, we also have a very large trench. 
Here is Alaska, and Alaska also near the Aleutian Islands has a very large trench as well. So when a continent uh, is collided with an oceanic plate, the ocean is more dense and so it sinks. So that oceanic plate goes down and it remelts and then there's a trench right along the continent. Some of your classic examples uh, would be the Andes mountain range. Um, and then just north of us in Oregon and Washington state in the very northern part of Canada, uh, there's this um, mountain chain called the Cascades, which is also formed by a subducting plate going underneath to create the volcanoes that we see on the uh, coastal ranges. Now, when two oceanic plates collide, the oceanic plate that is older will sink. So you take a look here, uh, you can see again the ocean plate going down and sinking. But if you're thinking again of the Philippine Trench and Japan, um, the Pacific plate is older. So that plate actually is the one that is going down and it is sinking. And so you can see here with the Aleutian Islands, those islands were formed because the old Pacific plate is going underneath to create these islands right here. So that is called ocean to ocean convergent plate boundary. The last example uh, is that of the continent to continent plate boundary. Now granite it's sort of like two blocks. Those two blocks are coming together. Not one is sort of going underneath, so it just piles up higher and higher. The most classic example, and again, the largest mountain range in terms of height above sea level, uh, is the Himalayan mountain range. So you can see here, we've got the Indian plate uh, and the Eurasian plate. It's colliding together to create this mountain chain of the Himalayas. Now you can see it's taken a long time. Here's India 71 million years ago, and then 55, and then 38, and then 10, and then it's colliding uh, like we see today. So there's no subduction. The mounds are just piling up. And again, it's based on it both being made out of granite. So before we close out, I wanna uh, introduce a term called accretion, because again, whenever there's ridges, they're pushing islands and island arcs and some large plateau areas into continents. Well, those things are just going to get scraped off on the edge of a continent, and that is called accretion. So that's a little bit uh, today about um, plate boundaries and some examples for you to take a look at. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day.